Tonight, Friday Night Smackdown takes place once again in the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida, live in the WWE Thunderdome on Fox. Now, one of the main matches advertised for tonight's show, probably the thing that most people are talking about for tonight's episode of SmackDown, is the SmackDown Women's Championship match, surely to be the main event of the show. It has to be the main event of the show, right? It's a Hell in a Sour rematch as Sasha Banks, the new SmackDown Women's Champion, defends her SmackDown Women's Championship against Bayley in a rematch from Hell in a Sour against her former best friend turned bitter rival. Now, last week, Sasha Banks came out on SmackDown. She discussed winning the SmackDown Women's Championship at Hell in a Sour, but she was interrupted by her rival Bailey, the former SmackDown Women's Champion, Bailey, spoke a lot of things, said that the victory at Hell in the Sour was a fluke, and also mentioned about Sasha Banks not being able to retain or keep her championships in WWE. Now, this set up the rematch for tonight's show. Bailey challenged Sasha, Sasha Banks accepted, and it's led to tonight's match where the, the storyline is. Can Sasha Banks prove Bailey wrong and go on to face the Raw Women's Champion Asuka at Survivor Series in the Champion vs. Champion match, Raw vs. SmackDown, Raw Women's Champion vs. SmackDown Women's Champion, or will we see yet again uh, Sasha Banks lose her championship on her first title defense? Now, it's an interesting idea that they've continued to go with this aspect of the storyline because, of course, it's a, it's a well-known point at this point. Sasha Banks hasn't. She never has retained a championship in WWE. She's yet to do it. She's never done it. Um, she's always lost straight away, whether it's to Charlotte on Monday Night Raw or Helena Sow to Charlotte, or she's lost to Asuka, of course, at SummerSlam this year. She became the Raw Women's Champion on an episode of Raw, but then her first title defense was SummerSlam, and she lost. So I think WWE is trying to get away from that because it's one of those things... The, the the first few times that happened, that was never, ever intentional, I don't think. you know It was just part of the booking at the time. They never went, oh, in a couple of years' time, we'll revisit it. I think it's one of those things that happened uh, on several occasions, a bit like the streak with The Undertaker, happened a, like a few times, and it gets pointed out by fans on social media or by people in the back that go, by the way, you do realise that every time Sasha Banks won a women's championship in WWE, she loses it on the first defence. And obviously now they're playing into that as a storyline. So I, I, I like that. I think it's actually quite interesting. Um, also, the story which is quite interesting as well is that when Banks and Bailey were SmackDown, uh, SmackDown when, when they were WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, obviously they did manage to defend the championships on several occasions. So yet again, Bailey can say the only way that you can retain a championship in WWE is by my support. So I like that storyline. I think that's an interesting aspect, an interesting way to look at it. Of course, I think Sasha Banks will win tonight. So when she does win tonight, it'll be a statement by Sasha Banks. It'll be an ability for them just to get past that because not only is it something that will get brought up a lot, but if it kept happening, you can jump to conclusions very quickly and you can read into things that aren't necessarily there when it comes to the booking of Sasha Banks. Oh, look, every time she wins, she loses straight away. Management doesn't like her. Creator doesn't like her. I genuinely think... In this instance, it's just a case of something that's uh, over time sl slowly happened. And then they went, oh, by the way, look, Sasha Banks, she's never retained. She's never retained. So I think Sasha Banks will win tonight, as I mentioned. I think it'll be a statement. And I've mentioned this quite a few times now, but it does uh, bear, is worth mentioning once again. Sasha Banks, she's in the current season of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. She's in season two of The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. Of course, that is... That is massive. That is absolutely massive. Like the Star Wars universe is ginormous. The fandom that comes with the Star Wars universe possibly is even bigger than the fandom that comes with the WWE universe. So Sasha Banks being a what looks to be a major player in season two of The Mandalorian is a massive, massive deal. And I think, and I've mentioned this a few times now, I think that's why they've sped up this storyline. I think originally the plan was to hold things out until WrestleMania or at least until 2021 because you do have to question why did they rush this now in October, November of all places? You know, you've been you've been developing this storyline, teasing this split, teasing these matches between Bailey and Banks for months and then you do it in October. Why do it then? The, the parallel there is that Sasha Banks debuts in season two of The Mandalorian in October into November. And at the same time, 
They then do the Banks and Bailey match at Hell in a Cell and Sasha Banks becomes a SmackDown Women's Champion. For me, there's no coincidence there. There is absolutely no coincidence there because at this time, with Sasha Banks' character in The Mandalorian, it looks like she's going to be a major player in that series and at least a big factor in that series. You have to consider that because of that, Sasha Banks is going to be all over the media. She's going to be all over mainstream media, not just WWE media, not just social media. She is going to be across mainstream media. If people aren't familiar with Sasha Banks, they're going to become a lot more familiar with her. She might spike in popularity. Look, this series for Sasha Banks and The Mandalorian could be a massive breakout moment for her. Imagine it all goes really well and then suddenly you've got, I mean, it's a Disney program. Suddenly you've got people from Marvel reaching out to Sasha Banks. Suddenly you've got people from all over the entertainment industry reaching out saying, can we have Sasha Banks in our TV show? Can we have Sasha Banks in our film? So I suspect that, again, she's going to be all across the media in the next couple of months. Her popularity is going to spike massively. She's already got a t millions of followers on Instagram and on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's going to continue more with this guest spot in The Mandalorian, a series regular in The Mandalorian in this season. So again, that's why I think they've put the title on her now because with all these people checking out Sasha Banks, going to look at Sasha Banks, WWE wants them to find, oh, one, she's a WWE superstar. Two, she's the SmackDown Women's Champion. SmackDown is on Fox. Let's go watch SmackDown on Friday nights. So it makes, it makes the most sense in the world that she becomes the champion right now because... She's arguably one of the biggest female superstars that they've got on the roster right now. Becky Lynch is away. She's on maternity leave. Charlotte Flair is returning soon, but we don't know when. Ronda Rousey will return, return eventually, but that's three big names that aren't on TV right now. And Sasha Banks and Bayley easily are the two biggest female stars in WWE that are currently working on the roster. Obviously, Asuka's fantastic, but you look at uh, Sasha Banks and Bayley, they are the two biggest stars and names that they have female-wise on the roster right now. So it makes total sense why they've switched the title to Banks. She's going to be in the media a lot over the next couple of weeks and months, so that makes total sense to me. Now, obviously, uh, they hyped up in this one that the winner is going to face Asuka at Survivor Series, the Raw Women's Champion versus the SmackDown Women's Champion. I've mentioned this before on social media. I would, I would have been really, really excited to see Sasha Banks versus Asuka because they're two tremendous workers, great talents. They're going to have a great match. But I would be more excited if we hadn't have already seen Sasha Banks versus Asuka several times this year. And we had. We saw the feud on Raw. We, they had the match at Extreme Rules. They had the match at SummerSlam. So we've already seen and a match on Raw and in tag matches. We've probably already seen them face off against each other at least five or six times this year. And so, again, that does reduce the excitement for the match. I know people will say, well, it's a different Sasha Banks now. Well, that's true, but... Not really a long period of time has passed since they last faced off. It was only SummerSlam, and that was back in August. So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the match because they'll have a great match, but it doesn't feel like, oh, it's the one time of year that SmackDown faces Raw, and you can see matches that you wouldn't normally find. Well, <laughs> you can in this instance because we're seeing Banks and Asuka, and we saw that several times earlier this year. So that does kind of reduce the excitement uh, there slightly. I suppose a question that you have to consider as well coming out of this match tonight between Sasha Banks and Bailey is the feud over. And I don't know if it is. I think considering how long they took to build this match, I would be very, very surprised if it was just one pay-per-view match, one TV match, and it was done. I feel like there is more to it than that. This is WWE after all. They love the rematch. It's a rematch culture in WWE, especially with the big stars. So I think, again, you look at who you've got on the roster right now on Raw and SmackDown. The two biggest female stars right now that are on TV are Sasha Banks and Bayley. So I don't think you would just remove them from facing each other very quickly. So I think Sasha Banks will win tonight, but I do think we'll probably get Bayley versus Sasha Banks at TLC um, in some form of a TLC match because realistically, what other people can Sasha Banks feud with on SmackDown right now? I mean, there's names. I've put a few names down. We'll go through them in a second. Uh, but I, I think the main person still would be Bailey, So that does lead you to question whether Bailey will get involved at Survivor Series. I think she might. I think that's how Asuka might get the victory there. Um, I think that's, again, that's maybe how they'll do that. But again, considering, like I mentioned earlier, with Sasha Banks being all over the media right now and being involved with The Mandalorian, is she going to be doing jobs at the moment or is she going to be getting the mega push to the moon? 
I think that's something worth considering as well. But I mentioned who else could Sasha Banks face on SmackDown going forward. Well, I've put down the names of the remaining female superstars on the roster. You've got Billy Kay. Is Billy Kay ready for a SmackDown Women's Championship feud yet? Well, she could certainly carry the load. I think the Billy Kay versus Sasha Banks feud would be fine. But given since the split of the Iconics, we've been given no real reason to care about Billy Kay or Peyton Royce for that matter. And they split up the Iconics. And on Monday Night Raw, Peyton Royce is now teaming up, teaming up with Lacey Evans. So absolute craziness, ridiculousness. So I don't think Sasha Banks is going to be feuding with Billy Kay for the SmackDown Women's Championship anytime soon. Uh, a name that I could see, though, is Carmella. Now, obviously, Carmella's been repackaged. She's got the untouchable gimmick, and she was the mystery woman. She's sort of the glamorous version now instead of the previous version of Carmella. Given the amount of time that WWE has invested into those vignettes and into that character, to me, that would say that they might be lining her up for a future feud with Sasha Banks for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Of course, Carmella is a former SmackDown Women's Champion herself, former Money in the Bank winner, we know that executives are high on her, so I could see Carmella facing Sasha Banks in the future. Obviously, you've got Liv Morgan on SmackDown now, along with Ruby Riot. I don't know how much longer they'll be a tag team, to be honest, considering that the SmackDown Women's, uh, the, so the Women's Tag Team Championships, rather, are on Monday Night Raw. Of course, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax can appear on, on any show, but they don't really tend to enforce that rule that much. Most of the times, they just appear on the brand that they're on. So, I mean, maybe we could have the Riot Squad become women's tag team champions in the future. But, I mean, I would be definitely, definitely interested in a Liv Morgan-Sasha Banks feud. I think that's got legs. I think Liv Morgan showed earlier this year when she was a singles wrestler, she's got potential. She can work in the ring. I think she is developing well. And uh, I think a, a feud against Sasha Banks or even a mini TV feud would be a way to elevate that to the next level. Obviously, you've got Natalia on SmackDown now too, and I can already hear the groans and people rolling their eyes at that one, and you wouldn't be wrong. Um, but Natalia is a solid worker. We know the officials like her. Look, if they wanted to have a feud that just lasted a month just to get them to the end of the year, I could see them doing a Sasha Banks versus Natalia feud. You have to remember also, when Sasha Banks returned last year after SummerSlam, who did she attack? She attacked Natalia in Natalia's hometown of Toronto. So it wasn't Calgary, was it actually? But in her own country then of Canada. So I could see that happening. Ruby Riot again live with Liv Morgan. I think they'll probably be more focused on tag team wrestling if that is even a thing anymore. Tamina, I mean I'm stunned she does a job. Uh, Zelina Vega, again I think Zelina Vega would be an interesting one. We've just come off a feud between Zelina Vega and Asuka on Raw. I thought that she did fine, um, but I think she's an interesting character. I think we we're going to see more of her wrestling in the future which is cool and actually that means because we haven't seen her wrestling that much, a lot of the matches she has in front of her are very, very fresh, including a Sasha Banks feud. So if I was going to pick two that are likely to feud with Sasha Banks uh, after Bailey, if the Bailey feud does, uh, does stop after tonight's match, it would probably be Carmella and Zelina Vega. But there are certainly options. There are certainly options without doubt. And to be honest, there is, there is no doubt, really, is there here, that Sasha Banks, she's the top babyface on the SmackDown women's roster. Bailey is the top heel on the SmackDown women's roster. But in terms of a title change, you know, I just don't see Sasha Banks losing the championship anytime soon. But on the flip side of that, I really don't see Bailey winning the championship any anytime soon either. I mean, S Sasha Banks has just won the SmackDown women's championship, so why would she drop it, even though that hasn't stopped her in the past? But Bailey, look, she held the championship for 380 days. If you take out that week with that championship reign with Charlotte, it's like 500 days, maybe even longer. I don't think WWE would give Bailey the championship so soon uh, again after holding it for so long, because that it, it just doesn't make any sense. And there isn't the desire to see her with the championship. She needs time away from the championship now because she was close to it for so long. So, who does Bailey feud afterwards? There, I mentioned the list of names. As a as a heel, there aren't there aren't a ton of baby faces in that list. Probably it'd have to be Liv Morgan or Ruby Riot. It'd have to be one of them. Is she gonna have a feud with Billy Kay? I don't think so. So that's that that's interesting. I think maybe a Liv Morgan or Ruby Riot feud might be an option there. Would certainly elevate someone like a Liv Morgan without a doubt. But Sasha Banks, I think, will win tonight. And I I think, and I do really hope this will be the main event. It wasn't the main event at Hell in the Cell. Arguably, it should have been. It was probably the best match on the show, Sasha Banks and Bailey. So hopefully tonight it will be the main event. I also hope it gets... 
It's always difficult on TV, but I hope it gets at least 15 minutes, maybe even longer, 20 minutes. The issue is with these TV matches that do go on quite long is you're going to have multiple ad breaks. You're going to have multiple TV adverts and ad breaks. And the issue is, is that every time you had an ad break, especially in a high stakes championship match like that, every time you go to an ad break and you come back, you're starting off cold again. You know, you have to get the fans back in. You have to find the hook back into the match. And that's always notoriously difficult. But if anyone can do it, it's these two. Look, like I said their match at Hell in a Cell was fantastic. Their history of matches is incredible. They're real life best friends. So they have the chemistry. They know each other well. Obviously, everyone still to this day talks about their match at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn in 2015. Is it the best NXT TakeOver match of all time? It's certainly up there. For me, it's a massively pivotal pivotal point in the women's evolution history in WWE. A lot gets spoken about when it comes to the four horsewomen, but that match in NXT, I think in a lot of people's eyes, opened people's eyes to say, look, women stole the show here. It wasn't the main event for that, for that pay-per-view, but it should have been. And I think it was a massively crucial point, and they've just got that chemistry. There's something about Banks and Asuka, that, or Banks and Bailey rather, that every time they face off, it's just... It's always fantastic. It's always fantastic. And then they followed that up, of course, with an Iron Man match at the following TakeOver, which was uh, unbelievable as well. So I have no doubt tonight will be a fantastic match. Look, it's, I mentioned the TakeOver matches. Is it going to be as good as the TakeOver matches? The Hal and Sal match a couple of weekends ago? Probably not. But I have no doubt in my mind it will be great, and I'm very much looking forward to it tonight. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Sasha Banks versus Bailey tonight on Friday Night Smackdown? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys and chat about Friday Night Smackdown here on the channel. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button. Really does help us out here on YouTube, go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. We are doing a live watch along for Smackdown tonight so be sure to subscribe, click that notification bell and you'll be notified when we go live as well as when we upload daily videos to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today and I'll speak for you again very very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.